Star Fox Zero channels everything bad about Wii U game design. A review, quote unquote, by Arthur Geese. A dramatic reading. Star Fox Zero is something of a reimagining slash reboot of the series. You know, kind of like what Star Fox 64 was for the original Super Nintendo Star Fox. AKA, the series has done this before, so I don't know why that's such a big fucking deal for so many people. As it takes story elements from the original SNES game, and mixes it with events and ideas from each subsequent title, including a few bits that seem directly borrowed from the unreleased Star Fox 2. It stars the titular pilot. T titular. I don't think you know what words mean, Mr. Geese. I don't think you know what words mean, but okay. And his animal friend. <laughs> why does that... That makes me laugh quite a bit. I don't know why. As they battle the evil Andros and his effort to take over that... Okay, so for anyone who's been living under a fucking rock for the last 20 goddamn years. Oh, hey, did you know that Legend of Zelda is about this fucking mute... This titular character named Zelda who can't talk and his efforts to save Princess Zelda from the evil Ganondorf. You know, in case you didn't know that. There are things that I don't hate about Star Fox Zero. Oh, it's not a terrible looking game. Not terrible. Not a terrible looking game. Yeah, eh, it's passable, you know. Yeah, eh, it's not terrible looking, you know, it's, you know, kind of basically passable in terms of a visual feast for your fucking eyeballs. It's using the same graphical engine of as uh, Mario, 6, Mario Kart 8. You know, it doesn't look shit or anything, I guess. And it evokes the simplified polygonal origins of the series in a way that makes sense. What the fuck? fuck are you even talking about? You're gonna have to elaborate on that one for me, buddy. It's clear and easy to read. The visuals? Oh, you're talking about the text boxes now. Okay. It's clear and easy to read. The graphics? No, the text boxes. Good transition on the fucking topics there. You... <laughs> oh my god, I just realized, like, these are things I don't hate about Star Fox Zero. The text is readable. Faint praise, I guess. And the talking heads that has always featured prominently in the previous games have been lovingly recreated. I'm not the only one who, like, none of this makes any fucking sense, right? Like, these are not words that were typed by a human being. In the most anachronistic way... By new series stewards fucking platinum games okay i love platinum they are the greatest but they're not the new stewards like they co-produce the they co-develop the game it's still a first party game shigeru miyamoto like had a direct personal hand in its development like they co-developed it they're not the new stewards of the game Platinum even included the badly di again love platinum uh misplaced responsibility in terms of the development of this game platinum even com included the badly digitized lock I like how this is linked soundbite from the original game before each mission begins in the beginning it's charming in its own way for some reason this line strikes me as incredibly patronizing the charm doesn't last, however. Hey, man, they're just wishing you good luck. Star Fox Zero feels like a very... Every muddled, unsuccessful experiment with the Wii U was stuffed into a single game. By default, aiming in this mostly on-rail shooter, 
remember this, remember this, is handled via motion controls. Though unlike in other Ryu titles, you can't use the Wiimote and Nunchuck peripheral. Um, no shit, Sherlock? Why would you be able to? You can't use the Wiimote, Wii Remote, and Nunchuck in fucking Fatal Frame 5 either, Limp Dick. This means aiming with the gamepad. Which would be bad enough on its own. Oh, it's bad enough on its own. Hold on. Remember this. Keep this in mind real quick. Like... Let's just give you the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, aiming with the gamepad is annoying. I don't, personally, I hate motion controls, but I don't see how, you know, holding the controller in your hand and moving, it's not like you have to take your eyes off of the screen. You can move the controller and the crosshair on screen will move with you. One of the things that always kind of bothered me about the old Star Fox games was that to move the aiming cursor, you had to move the entire rest of the ship. You couldn't shoot where your ship wasn't pointing. You had to point the ship in the same direction you were pointing your crosshairs. This changes that. Now, you can move the ship, and if you move your controller left and right, you can shoot left and right while moving the ship right and left. Like, you can argue about the implementation, but that's very appreciated, at least I think. Okay, but there is also extended, often arbitrary-seeming sequences where camera control on your television is taken away. He's talking about how during boss fights, it'll go into quote-unquote all-range mode, and, like, it'll lock on. He's talking about, if you look up the, uh, preview videos of the game, you'll see this, where during boss fights, it'll lock on to the boss, and you'll fly, like, in a circle around the boss while still being locked on, and then, like, you'll be able to shoot at them. Um, I don't think it's arbitrary, and I don't think it takes control away from you. I'm pretty sure that's player control. I'm pretty sure you can unlock on if you want to. I'm pretty sure you can, I, I've seen in the videos, you can lock on or unlock on yourself, and when you unlock on, it'll just be, you know, regular all-range mode like in the other games. Pretty sure you're full of shit on that one. Lock in the future to fix the system, at which point Star Fox forces you to use the screen on the gamepad to play the game from a constricted cock view, cockpit view cock you pit um also pretty sure that's not true again the crosshair is still on screen you can still just move the controller while still looking at the tv and see your shots connecting or not and aim that way i mean again i don't like move controls either motion controls either but you don't have to do it the way you're describing while in cockpit view, you still need to fly your R-Wing like normal, which requires both analog sticks. I'm very confused about what he means in this description here. In effect, Star Fox Zero wants you to manage the equivalent of three analog sticks. Moving your controller to aim is not the equivalent of a third analog stick. What the fuck does the second analog stick do during this? Like, does the left analog stick control up and down, and the right analog stick controls right and left? What is the second analog stick doing? I think you're full of shit. Which is ridiculous. The game isn't doing anything other space combat games haven't achieved using fewer inputs. <laughs> Have you ever played, like, a PC space combat game? Have you ever played a fucking... Have you ever played TIE Fighter? Uh, it does not require fewer inputs uh, than, than three analog... Quote-unquote three analog six. You need to have a fucking manual... Of, especially when you're flying that fucking... Uh, uh, I forget what it's called, but like in TIE Fighter, there's a fucking ship that's like a battleship. And you basically need two fucking people at the controls to fly that thing. It's fucking silly. And great at the same time. Complexity is what gives these games their appeal sometimes. But I think you're full of shit.
I think you're full of shit, and it's not as bad as you're claiming. Platinum, again, weird that you're putting the blame, quote-unquote, on Platinum here. Uh, it's not as bad as you're claiming because, Star Fox Zero, you can disable your motion controls! They can be disabled during default or when combat, a.k.a. this. These entire last two paragraphs you just wrote are completely invalidated because you can disable the motion controls. You are completely full of shit, good sir. But the newest points for motion controls are only available aiming option. This includes ground-based segments using the walker, which, while annoying, makes sense. Because, again, this game's eschewing the original Star Fox uh, system of movement uh, and, uh, of your ship and your crosshairs being one and the same. And if you want to aim up and down with these, it would mean you'd have to go up or down with the fucking helicopter, and it just wouldn't work out. And also, I haven't played the game, but I think you might be wrong. But I'll take, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt, good sir, and say, okay, motion controls are the only way to do these segments of the game. Okay. But wait. To add insult to injury, even when motion controls are disabled, your in-game companions will join on about using them for greater accuracy. So, disabling motion controls does not turn off the game audio. Holy shit. Did I mention that some mission-critical audio is only available through the gamepad speakers? I don't see why that's relevant. Or matters? I mean, you say this as if it's a bad thing. But, um... Uh, doesn't the game have... Isn't it clear and easy to read and has talking heads? If you've played the old games, you know that when someone talks, the little, like, portrait and, like, dialogue pops up. And it's like, duh, 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 duh. you can play the entire game muted, and you will still see the subtitles on screen. So I don't see why it matters. You can, like, he's saying this because you can mute the gamepad speakers. So it's giving you mission critical audio from your companions on the gamepad, which screen, the screen of the gamepad is mimicking the cockpit view. So the game is playing the the dialogue from your other from your wingmates that Fox would be hearing in his cockpit on the on the controller that has the screen that has a cockpit view. Basically you're complaining about that time in No More Heroes when like, the Wii controller would be used as a cell phone that Sylvia would call you on. That's the same effect that it's going for. And again, I don't see how this is a negative or fucking relevant. But okay. I've made it through more, little more than half of the game. Spoiler alert, he hasn't finished the game. He hasn't finished the fucking game yet. Uh, like, this... If you've played the original fucking Star Fox, or Star Fox 64, you can beat that game in, like, a couple hours? I can't imagine Star Fox Zero is much longer. Especially since, he says, the levels are very short. All of the levels are very short, the half of them that you've played. You couldn't finish this fucking game that has short levels? Like, a little more than half of the game. Okay, let's say, like, a typical run-through of a Star Fox game. Like, taking Star Fox 6 for an example, like, like, court, like, even going on the hard route. There's Corneria, uh, the fucking space battle, fucking the Aqua Planet, Cat Planet, the X uh, Nebula, 
pre venom and then venom that's like maybe six planets that's like six or seven levels on a single playthrough and these games are made to be replayed these games are made to be replayable because you can take a different planetary route through this through the lilac system every time you play you can take the hard route you can take the easy route i'm just assuming he took the fucking easy route you can take the easy route, you can go up the middle, you can go from the hard route down to the easy route, and back and forth. And a major selling point of Star Fox Zero, if you've seen any of the preview footage, is that you can make choices in the different levels to open up different routes. Like, that's a major selling point here. Like, you can let one of your ships die during, like, a space battle area level, or you can save it, and that'll open up a new level. Or you can do those, like, crazy psychedelic warp zones that send you from, like, the asteroid belt on the easy route and launches you right up to the hard route in one of the planets there. So this is a game that's built for replayability that you can finish in a handful of hours. He could not even finish one run-through of the game. He could not reach the fucking credit screen. Of this game with short levels. Like I'm just imagining Arthur Geese. Playing this game for like an hour and a half. And just throwing his controller down like. No. No. No more. I'm done. Fuck this game. Levels are extremely simple. Lacking any real sense of spectacle. I know for a fact. That one of the levels in particular is a space battle, because you need that in a Star Fox game. I'm pretty sure there's plenty of fucking spectacle. How about the spectacle of having Star Wolves show up and having to fight them? How about the spectacle of going to a fucking planet where Andross's army is developing a secret weapon and having it jump out? How about the fucking spectacle of, like, flying through an asteroid field? How about the spectacle of having to control your little fucking, like, raptor mode R-wing through an obstacle course in order to blow up a base that, like, while a space battle is going on outside? How about the spectacle of a fucking Independence Day homage? You're full of shit. Adventure. It's an on-rails, it's an on-rails shooter. It is an on-rails shooter. What the fuck do you mean, adventure? Or, and he says, like, or well, adventure. Like, is that, is that, like, a reference to Star Fox Adventures? I don't, Star Fox Zero doesn't, levels don't have any well, adventure. I don't get it. You're dumb for saying this. This really bothers me. I know it's immature to rag on it, but, like, I don't understand. You're stupid. Combat moves and fits and starts. It's an on rail shooter. Like, from beginning to end, you're going through an area, and enemies show up, and you shoot them. And then you keep going, and then enemies show up, and you shoot them. I don't... Like, it's not a game that you have any control over. It's... You start the level, you are moving forward. It's an on rails fucking shooter, dude. It's not that Star Fox is hard. But you still couldn't beat it? You still couldn't beat it? It's not even hard? It's bizarrely easy until it isn't. Okay, it's bizarrely easy until it isn't. Okay, let's just... It's not hard, but, like, I couldn't finish it. It's easy until it isn't easy. It's It requires quick shooting or action. There's a mode in Star Fox Zero where you can be completely invincible. There's a ship that Fox... It's basically the Super Tanuki ship that just lets you coast through the game. Like, Miyamoto talked about it in interviews. Everyone freaked out about it because, oh, my filthy casuals. Don't worry, guys. Apparently Star Fox Zero is still hard enough that Arthur Geese couldn't even fucking finish it even with a fucking invincibility cheat mode, no clip mode in the fucking game itself. Look at this. It is, to be blunt, a miserable experience, and the idea of playing more fills me with a deep kind of existential dread 
I can't really justify. Oh, you've demonstrated that very well, good sir. You have showed a complete lack of ability to justify fucking anything so far. The game is short. Yeah, it's fucking made to be replayable. It's made to be short. You couldn't finish it. You, even if the game is as bad as you're describing, you couldn't just bite your fucking lip, turn on the invincibility mode, and just, like, go, like, just bull rush through the game, not even fire a shot, just run through all the enemies with your invincibility mode and get to the end credits. <laughs> Actually seems very short, because, of course, he doesn't know. He didn't finish it. Standard platinum complement of challenges. I don't know why this is bothering me so much. Like, I love platinum. I love that they helped made this game. Did you see in Bayonetta 2 how they had that whole section where if you're wearing the fox costume, the, sh the plane turns into an R-ring and it's fucking amazing? Like, yeah, platinum worked on this game. It's still a first-party, in-house developed Nintendo game that Shigeru Miyamoto had personal directorial control over. It seems really strange to me that he's levying so much of the responsibility of this game's development on Platinum. Collectibles of Vine, that's interesting to me, I didn't know that. Pad out its length. It's an on-rails fucking shooter. He's acting like you can just run around the stage and complete challenges and find collectibles. The game, the level, is going to be the same length, regardless of whether you're looking for the collectibles or not. You could, like, even if you're looking for collectibles... They're going to go by no matter what because your because your ship is just moving forward. You have no control over it until you get to the all range mode sections. Although I'm sh maybe maybe during like the on the like vehicle segments, like when you're using running the Raptor or the helicopter around, maybe okay. I will give you that, good sir. I will give you that. There's also co-op, which sounds fucking awesome. I'm sure it's local co-op. But if it was online co-op, I would lose my fucking mind. That would be amazing. Share control of an R-Wing. Like, yeah, remember when I talked about TIE Fighter up there with the comms controls? Like, one player flies it, one player shoots. That's really awesome. And alleviates all of your complaints. Because you're like, oh no, you gotta use three analog sticks. Don't worry, dude, just get a friend. Just get a friend, and they can do half of the work for you. And you can concentrate on flying it or just shooting, and they can do the other thing. Look, uh, like, two reasons in three paragraphs why all of this fucking complaining is retarded and just invalidated. And this is great. Co-op mode where two players care control of an army. I assume they, before I assume they commit intense physical violence against each other. This is not the language you use against a game that just has some, like, control kerfuffles you're not happy with. You know, like, this is, this is the language you use when you're talking about a game that's systematically broken. You know, a game that's unfinished. A game that just does not function, that should not have been shipped. This is ludicrous. I'm reminded, I'm remind, like, he's he's saying, like, oh, the controls are so bad. I'm reminded of the new Kid Icarus game on the 3DS. I know someone who, playing that game, actually sprained their wrist because of the method of controlling it is physically strenuous. Especially since that game has a challenge mode that, like, is physically demanding. Like, he had to go into the hospital and get, like, a brace for his wrist because like it caused damage to the fucking like tendon or whatever is in your wrist like it didn't break it or like sprain it or anything but like there was damage done there like nintendo games they're known for doing this they're known for 
imp especially first party games, implementing the unique control styles of their hardware into the software. And I don't like motion controls either. I don't like motion controls either. But it's not like, it's not broken. It's not arduous. It's not agony inducing. He is exaggerating to the point of lunacy. Especially since the co-op, as he described it, allows, like, alleviates a lot of the concerns that he brought up. All the controls are really complicated. You have to use through, like, okay, your buddies can do it. Why would having more people, like, having, like, to to split the fucking workload, the dump, the awe oh, so demanding, like, this is so hard, make it more frustrating? And again, you can just turn on invincibility mode at any time. You literally don't even have to play the game. You can turn on invincibility mode, put the controller down, and you will finish the fucking level. Like, give or take, oh, I gotta press the A button to shoot this boss. You are a fucking child. In many ways, Star Fox Zero actually feels like a launch title. Whatever. This isn't a review of Star Fox Zero, save for very rare extreme occurrences. Polygon requires games be completed before you review it. Uh, hold on. Codename Steam. So here's my dark secret. I didn't finish Codename Steam. 6 out of 10. Review. 6 out of 10. Review. I did not finish it. Oh, and hey, look at this. My review editor, Arthur Geese, said I didn't have to finish the game. Arthur Geese approved this review of a game the reviewer did not finish when apparently it's polygon-like standard that you have to finish the game before you review it. Except for rare extreme circumstances. I guess, you know, us, I guess Codename Steam was a rare extreme circumstance. I'm not playing any more of this game. What? F more for me then, buddy. Fucking ludicrous. Like, I'm not even disputing a lot of this. Because I don't like motion controls either. But, like, look at the way a lot of this is framed. It is, to be blunt, a miserable experience, and the idea of playing more fills me with a kind of deep existential fear. I don't think it's this game in particular that the idea of playing more fills you with an existential, uh, existential dread, buddy. I don't think it's Star Fox Zero that fills you with an existential dread. I think it's just playing games in general. I think you're just the kind of person who just despises playing video games in general. Who just hates the idea of playing video games, period. And yet, you, your job is to be a review editor at a video game website. This is not a review. I, uh, gee, you know, Polygon... Uh, make sure to uh, specify whether or not uh, the games they review were using a, a pre-release review code. And since the game is not yet out, the game is not out yet, I assume that means you got a pre-release review code to review this game. I'm sure Nintendo was happy to hear that they wasted a review copy of their game on a website that isn't going to review their game. Here is a free copy of this game so that you can review it. I'm not reviewing this game. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to finish this game. I'm going to instead open up the box, the case, take a dump into it, and then send it back to Nintendo. $60 video game. Wasted. Very ethical.